This feed ingredient is banned in seven countries, but right now it's probably in your cattle's ration and you don't even know it. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to show you the truth. Three months ago, I started investigating why some nations completely outlawed this in livestock feed, while others use it every single day. What I found was disturbing. The science shows extreme results, massive weight gain, incredible feed efficiency, but there's a dark side nobody talks about. Regulatory agencies are divided, farmers are confused, and feedlots are quietly making fortunes. The craziest part? The research I found suggests this ingredient might actually change the meat itself. So before you feed another ration, you need to see what I discovered, starting with this banned document from the European Food Safety Authority. The ingredient I'm talking about is ractopamine. You might know it as Optiflex for cattle or Paline for pigs. It's a beta agonist, a growth promoter that redirects nutrients away from fat and pushes them straight into muscle tissue. The results are insane. We're talking about 20 to 30 pounds of additional lean muscle in the final weeks before slaughter. Feed conversion rates that make every nutritionist's jaw drop. But here's where it gets controversial, and this is what kept me up at night researching. China banned it, Russia banned it, the entire European Union won't touch it, Taiwan, mainland China, over 160 countries have said absolutely not to this ingredient. Yet in the United States, Canada, and a handful of other nations, it's perfectly legal, widely used, and generating millions in profit for feed companies and large-scale operations. So what's really going on here? Why is the scientific community so divided on something that seems so effective? Let me break down what ractopamine actually does inside your animal's body, because understanding this changes everything. When cattle consume this beta agonist in their feed during the last 20 to 40 days before harvest, it binds to specific receptors in muscle cells. This binding triggers a cascade of cellular events that increase protein synthesis while simultaneously decreasing protein degradation. Translation? Your cattle build muscle faster and break down muscle slower. It's like hitting the accelerator and removing the brake at the same time. Field trials show that cattle fed ractopamine gain an additional 0.2 to 0.4 pounds per day compared to control groups. Over a 30-day feeding period, that's 6 to 12 extra pounds of saleable product per head. Multiply that across a 1,000 head feedlot and you're looking at serious money. The feed efficiency improvements are equally impressive, with conversion ratios improving by 5 to 10 percent. From a pure production standpoint, the numbers don't lie. But hold on, because here's the part that made me stop and question everything. Multiple studies, including research published in the Journal of Animal Science, found detectable residues of ractopamine in meat tissue after slaughter. Now, the FDA says these levels are safe for human consumption. The acceptable daily intake they established is 0.1 to 0.4 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. For most people, that's well within safety margins, according to U.S. regulatory standards. However, and this is crucial, other countries looked at the exact same data and came to completely different conclusions. The European Food Safety Authority stated they couldn't establish a safe level of residue because the data on human cardiovascular effects was insufficient. Think about that for a second. Same science, different interpretation, completely opposite regulations. Here's what really shocked me during my investigation. Rectopamine was originally developed as a treatment for asthma in humans, but it was never approved for human use because of cardiovascular concerns, elevated heart rates, and potential impacts on people with underlying heart conditions. So how did it end up in livestock feed? The pharmaceutical companies pivoted, repositioned it as an animal growth promoter, and the rest is history. Does that sit right with you? Let's talk about what this means for you, the cattle producer watching this right now. If you're using ractopamine-based feed additives, you need to understand the export implications. If you're planning to sell beef to China, the European Union, or any of the banned countries, your cattle cannot have received ractopamine at any point. These nations test for residues, and if they find them, your product gets rejected. We're talking about massive market access issues that could cost you everything on an export sale. 
Some large feedlots now run two separate programs, one with ractopamine for domestic markets and one completely clean for export markets. That's double the complexity, double the record keeping, and double the risk of cross-contamination. Have you thought about this in your operation? Because one mistake in feed distribution could disqualify your entire load from premium international buyers. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do. That's not my job. My job is to give you the complete picture so you can make informed decisions for your operation. So let's look at both sides clearly. The benefits are undeniable from a production efficiency standpoint. Faster gains, better feed conversion, more profit per head in the final finishing phase. For large commercial operations focused on domestic markets, the economic incentive is powerful. But the drawbacks deserve equal attention. Market access restrictions, consumer perception issues, potential regulatory changes, and lingering questions about long-term safety that even scientists can't agree on. There's also the ethical consideration. Are we pushing animal biology beyond natural limits? Some veterinarians argue that beta agonists increase stress in cattle, elevate body temperature, and can lead to higher rates of lameness or transport losses. The data on this is mixed, but it's worth considering. Here's my personal take after diving deep into this topic. Transparency matters more than ever. If you choose to use ractopamine, document it meticulously, understand your market requirements, and communicate clearly with buyers. If you choose to go without it, that's becoming a marketable advantage. Natural, no added hormones, no beta agonist programs are commanding premium prices in certain markets. The biggest mistake I see producers make is using these additives without fully understanding the downstream consequences. They see the immediate gain, add it to the ration, and never think about export certification, consumer trends, or potential regulatory shifts. Then suddenly, they're locked out of a market opportunity because of decisions made months earlier without complete information. So what should you do moving forward? First, talk to your nutritionist and veterinarian. Get their professional opinions specific to your operation, your markets, and your goals. Second, understand where your beef is going. If you're selling locally or domestically in countries where it's legal, that's one scenario. If you're targeting export markets, you need a completely different strategy. Third, stay informed. Regulations change, consumer preferences evolve, and what's acceptable today might not be tomorrow. The feed industry moves fast, science evolves, and as cattle producers, we have to stay ahead of the curve. This isn't about fear, it's about knowledge. It's about making conscious, informed decisions that protect your operation, your animals, and your reputation in the marketplace. If this video opened your eyes to something you didn't know before, I need you to do something for me. Subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now because we're building a community of informed, responsible producers who aren't afraid to tackle the tough topics. Drop a comment below and tell me, are you using ractopamine in your operation or are you running a clean program? Your experience matters and other farmers need to hear it. Share this video with every cattle producer you know because this information could change their entire marketing strategy. We're in this together, learning, growing, and building better operations one video at a time. I'll see you in the next one.